And just like you need faith to overcome the enemy, you need faith to activate this blessing. Now the Bible talks about the blessing of Abraham has come on the Gentiles. Say, I'm blessed. <laughs> All right, let's read a scripture here. Let's read it. And starting in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. And he addeth no what? Psalm. Let's read it out of the NIV. I've done that before. Out of the NIV, he said it a little bit different way, but it means the same thing. He says, the blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. Are y'all with me? Now, what is this blessing? All right. Now, the blessing is a word, barakah. Barakah. The accent is on the ka. Just like you, God changed Abram's name to Abraham. He took Sarah's name and changed it from Sarah to Sarah. And you see the H there, but the H usually isn't pronounced. It's a ha. Because as you know, the Jewish, in, in, in the Jewish uh, 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 Torah and so forth today, they don't pronounce the word God. It's a ha. Baraka. And this word Baraka came from the word, it means, the Hebrew word means to bless, to bless. And the word to bless is the word Barak. You've heard the president's name or in the Hebrew, Barak. And it means to endue with power. And the power is for success, for prosperity, for fruitfulness and fertility. It's for longevity, health, protection, Bless. When Sarah couldn't have kids, God came to him in Genesis 17, said, no longer will her name be called Sarah. But now she's connected up with the blessing. And all of a sudden, she could be fruitful. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? I'm saying once this blessing comes on your life and you believe it, everything changes. That now, if you look where this blessing starts, it actually starts in Genesis, but the Baraka starts in Genesis, it, it, it bless starts when God says, I will bless you, starts in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. But when the blessing starts, it starts over in Genesis chapter 12, where you start at verse 1, and look what it says. It says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, into a land that I will show you. Now notice what he's telling him. He is saying, Okay, for me to work with you, you cannot depend on the system you came from. And I will make of thee a what? Great nation. And I will, I will barack you and make your name great and you shall be a barakah. Do you hear what I'm saying now? 
Look at the next verse. And I will rock, rock them that bless you, that bless you. And I will curse them that curse you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be paraka. Here's what he said to Abraham. How many people today are claiming Abraham is their father? Uh, the church, I mean, spirit, a spiritual father for, for natural thing. The, the Jews, if he's the father of the faith of the church, the Jew and, come on, the Muslims. They said, that's my father. I remember I almost got in a fight. I was over in Jerusalem and I said, well, I was, somehow we got talking, God was selling something. I said, well, Abraham's pray, Father Abraham, he's my father. He says, he's my father too. I said, no, he's my father. <laughs> he is my father too. He, he's a Muslim guy. My point to you is, look how many kids Abraham has. <laughs> now this is kind of interesting because when this blessing comes on your life, all these things start happening to you. Because where you were coming up short before and things weren't working in your life right, now stuff is going to start working. Are you following what I'm saying? I mean, things are going to start working that didn't work before. I mean, that um, this, your whole life is going to change. And I'm saying that this blessing is on you now, but I got to get you faith for believing in that blessing and willing to leave the system that you're counting on. Say amen to that. So when he says that your life will no longer be a struggle, that's the blessing now, it no longer be a struggle. You remember when the woman who had, her husband had died, you remember? And so now she goes to the man of God. And she said, hey, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, my husband did fear the Lord. Now my kid's about to be taken and put in bondage because we owe some money. He said, what do you have in your, lot, in your house? Now this blessing is about to kick in. Now I'm, I'm saying, I want you to keep track of all this because God's going to cancel debt in your house. He's he going to do it and we're going to do it with the blessing. The blessing... Say amen to this. The blessing is going to be there and it's going to be powerful enough to cancel debt in your house, Lord have mercy. And on that, on you, once that blessing comes on you, let's go over here. I'm just, I'm just giving you a little dab of this because this is going to be so powerful. Look at Genesis chapter 27, please. Over in Genesis chapter 27, this is Jacob. Jacob is coming to get the blessing. But he's getting it uh, deceptively. Because the blessing was supposed to be on Esau, the firstborn. But here Jacob, who really was chosen by God, because God can see the end from the beginning. And he knows who needs to have that blessing. Go to God. Y'all with me? <laughs> so here he comes in, tricks his father, and I'll start reading at verse 26. And his father Isaac said unto him, come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him and he smelled the smell of raiment and did what to him? Baraka. Come on, Baraka. Uh, him and said, see, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. Baraka. Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and what? wine. Keep going. Let people what? Serve you and nations what? Bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. 
Cursed be everyone that what? Curses thee. And blessed or Barak be he that blesses thee. Now notice what he did. He spelled out the blessing so you could see that part of the blessing. And in comes Esau after Jacob leaves and say, I'm ready. Let me give you in my own thinking words what Isaac said to him. Sorry, I have already made your brother your master. And there's nothing I can do about it. When he spoke the blessing over him, watch this, it attached to him. You can't wash it off. Come on. The devil can't separate you from it. It is holding on you just like I'm holding on to this thing right here. Say amen to this. And it is designed to change your whole life. Whatever you've been struggling with, this blessing will remove it and turn your life from mourning to gladness. It, it, this blessing, when it comes on you, nothing can separate you from it. And whatever battle you're having, this blessing is going to give you victory. Oh, Lord, have mercy. This blessing is going to give you protection. It's going to give you fruitfulness. Here is Sarah over here in Genesis chapter 20. And Sarah had been taken by Abimelech and put in Abimelech's house. Watch this. And God came, verse 3, and God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, you are but a dead man. For she is another man's wife. Now, Abimelech started pleading this case right there. Hey, I didn't touch this woman. Listen, listen, you can take this woman out of here. I didn't touch. But not only that, then after that, verse 7, it says, Now, therefore, restore the man his wife. Come on. For he is a prophet, and he shall pray for you, and you shall live. He is about to die. I'm saying those that come against you, now you wait till I get to vengeance again. Those that come against you, if they don't back off. Now, I'm, I'm saying you about to go into Canaan and get your inheritance. Part of your inheritance is the blessing. Look what it says in Revelation and chapter 5 and verse 11 and 12. Lord have mercy. Are you with me? He says this, and be, I beheld and heard a voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive what? Power. This is your inheritance now. What else? Riches. Come on. What else? Wisdom. Come on. What else? Strength. Come on. What else? Honor. Come on. What else? Glory. And what else? Blessing. Not blessings. Blessings are washing machines, cars, houses. You don't get the blessings. You get the blessing. And the blessing is going to produce all the houses, all the cars. I'm telling you, the church should be the biggest real estate owners in the world. Now, let me give you one more thing. The blessing is going to cause you to have favor. Say favor. favor. Say it like this. Favor. favor. And favor is not fair. Favor takes away everything that you've been struggling with. When favor is on your life, this is the only one thing I want you to remember, then you get anything you request. Here's a woman named Esther. And Esther went up before the king. Lord have mercy. Look at it over in Esther chapter 5 and verse 1. I'm telling you now, somebody here, if you just believe me, if you believe your prophet today, I got good news for you. God is about to turn your situation around, not in months or years, 
in days. All you got to do is receive what your man of God said. He said, now it came to pass the third day that Esther put on a royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon the royal throne in a royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained what? Favor. Say it again. Favor. Sing it. Favor. Favor. In the sight of the king, he held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther, what? Drew near. And she touched the top of the scepter, glory to God, and said to the king, her king, uh, king said the king to her, what will thou, Queen Esther? Now get this now. And what is it that you request? It shall be given to you. Uh, to thee up to half of my kingdom. I'm saying, listen, don't sell yourself short. Whatever you go request in 2016, it's going to be given to you up to half of the kingdom. So I'm here to tell you right now that this blessing is on your life. And we're going to get ready to walk in that blessing just like Abraham. Put it up there. Genesis chapter 24 and verse 1, please. And look how God blessed Abraham. Now the way he blessed him, he's going to bless you. It's not because of who you are. It's because of whose you are. That you got the blessing on your life. It said, and Abraham was old and stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in how many things? All things. I'm looking for my kids to be blessed. I'm looking for my business to be blessed. I'm looking for my ministry to just explode. Come on. I'm looking for everywhere I go. I'm blessed coming in. Come on. Then I'm blessed coming out. I'm looking to be the head. Come on. Not the tail. I'm looking to be the lender. Come on. And not the bar. I'm telling you this year, I who you are, what level you are, how much education you have. I got good news for you. The blessing is on your life and you can't get it off. You can't wash it off. The devil can't talk you out of it. What you're going to do is walk in that blessing and we're going to see the blessing of Abraham manifested in your life in 2016. Say I'm blessed. Now give God praise and say I. You wait. You wait till I show you some parts of this. But here's where you're going. You're going to face the giants. Are you going to have to fight? But what fight are you going to fight? Listen, if you just fight that fight of faith, when God sees your faith, it transfers the battle from your hands over to his. Say amen. And God does not lose a fight. The Bible says that we overcome by the word of the lamb and by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Just speak that word. Start declaring that word. I know what the doctor said, but tonight you get in that word. You said, wait a minute. By his stripes, I am healed. Let God be true. Come on. Let every man be a liar. Guaranteed, soon as you get quiet, the devil said, feel it and see if you feel it. Don't go by your feelings. You can't go by the condition, but you can go by the promise. You take that promise and you beat the devil on the side of the head with it. Beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him. And pretty soon, there it is. Praise God. There it is. <laughs> there that new car. Go it to God. There's that debt-free status. Go it to God. There them kids getting saved. God knew it. There it is right there. There's that new job. There's that profit. There's that business. Don't you back off for one minute. The blessing is on your life. Woo! Sit down. Your 
our days of struggling over. We are about to manifest the glory of God like has never been seen for hundreds of years. You are the generation that God has been waiting for. All those others with unbelief have died out. And watch this, just like I preach on New Year's Eve night, you have gone through the hard place. God has purified your heart. You were wondering, why didn't this thing come to pass? It didn't come to pass because God was doing a work in your heart. But when we got through the lesson of love and love got back in your heart, now God is saying, you ready now, daughter. You ready now, son. Go get them, praise God. Go get your stuff. Satan has robbed you and spoiled you, but it's coming back right now. Now give God a shout. Well, I trust that you are blessed by today's powerful message. Now, the, the Word of God is, is so powerful that it can change all of our lives. You see, that's basically what happened to me when I came to Christ. I confess the Word of God. Romans 10, 9, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, born again. And that's exactly what I did. And, and my life changed from then on. I mean, things, uh, people that I was upset with and, and had awed against and bitter about, uh, God gave me a spirit of love. That in my finances, I mean, I, I was head over heels in debt. I owed so many people money. <laughs> God took me totally out of debt. Oh, no man, nothing ever since. Everything paid off. And, and not only that, but my performance at my job took me to the top of the ladder. So my point to you is, is that once you get born again, everything changes. Now, I'm asking you, are you born again? Now, I didn't ask you whether you went to church. <laughs> I asked you, are you born again? You see, because you can train uh, anyone to go in and sit up in the service for an hour and a half and come out. But it's something else when you have a fellowship with God. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying that God wants his people back. He wants all of humanity back with him. Adam lost it. Jesus got it back. Jesus said, no one can come back to the Father except through me. So as we receive Jesus Christ, he is the one that causes the miracle to happen inside of us, that we become born again. We're born into God's family. So I'd like to pray for you right now, because the Bible says the way of the transgressor gets hard. I tell you, I tried to make it on my own. It got harder and harder. But once I got born again, everything changed. So I want to pray for you right now. If you'd like that prayer, I want you to do something, just as an act of your faith. Just lower your head and just humble yourself out and just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord, I come to you now just as I am. You know my life. You know how I've lived. Forgive me, Lord. I repent of my sins. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for my sins, and on the third day, he was raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, I ask you, come into my heart. Live your life in me and through me from now on. From this day forward, I belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, I know it seems simple, but that was a powerful prayer that you just prayed that worked a miracle inside of you. Now. I'm, I've got some books I've written to myself called Born Again and Spirit Filled in English and in Spanish. Now, I'd like to send it to you free of charge. This is going to tell you what just happened and, and give you some information about what the next steps are and so forth and so on. But I want you to follow that because God has a plan for your life. You wouldn't be listening to me right now if he didn't have a big plan for your life. And I want to just encourage you now. Let's get into it. Praise God. It happened to me, and it's going to happen to you. <laughs> Boy, this is good stuff, isn't it? Well, I want you to write me now. Stay in touch with us. Let us know what happened to your life. We want to follow you and just track the progress and the miracles that are going to take place. Well, this is Bill Winston saying, Has everything to do with your successful life of prayer? 
everything to do with it, not something to do with it, everything to do with it. Now, glory to God. Once you get born again, you are made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say, I am the righteousness of God. Okay. Adam. Adam was righteous, but he sinned. And when he sinned, where he was righteous, now there was unrighteous. Because where he was a child of God, now he got born again from life to death. And Satan became his spiritual father. So he got the nature of his daddy. The nature of God is righteousness. The nature of Satan is iniquity. That was our nature. But now we've been born again. And our nature now is righteousness, but this body and this mind need to be renewed and this body needs to be retrained. So the body and the mind still want to go to the riverboat and the spirit is saying, don't go out there, man. You lost your money last week. Don't go out there. But the spirit, come on now, y'all, y'all with me now. Okay. So you got this war going on, see. But because you miss it, if you confess it, he's faithful and just to forgive it. Come on. And cleanse you. Come on. Come on now. Of all unrighteousness. Why cleanse of all unrighteousness? Put it up on the board. First John chapter five, verse 17, please. And put it all unrighteousness. Why? Because it says in the scriptures that all unrighteousness is sin. See? One of the ways that the enemy has of managing God's people or trying to manage God's people is to keep them sin conscious. See, because sin consciousness is like a disease of the spirit. It won't let you walk upright. Stay with me, pray, pray, praise God. Are y'all with me here? You see, consciousness of sin, what I did yesterday, guilty or shame, so forth and so on. You can't have that because consciousness of sin wipes out faith. And you need faith for answered prayer. So the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now you have been made righteousness. Say, I have been made righteous. The Bible says that over in uh, 2 King, uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, any man or any person that's in Christ is a what? New creature. All things are what? Passed away. Behold, all things are what? New. Come on down to verse 21. And in verse 21, he says this. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So notice what he did. He took our sin on him and gave us, come on, his righteousness. So you are righteous not because you feel righteous. You are righteous not because you're doing everything right. You are righteous because that's the way you were born. And he knows that what you're trying to do is overcome this old life. You're trying to whip this flesh into shape. You're trying to make your mind think on good things instead of thinking on those things you used to think. He knows you're battling with that. So if you fall, he lifts you back up. Said, come on, get up. Let's go again. Praise God. Are y'all with me here? So now righteousness brings some things to you. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 32, please. Righteousness brings some things to you. And in righteousness, he says this, the work of righteousness shall be what? Peace, peace. Once you get 
back into right standing with God, you come back into fellowship with God. Say amen to that. Notice when Adam sinned, he ran from God. But notice now when you mess up, you're going to run back to God because he's got the blood eternally flowing to cleanse your mind and your heart from all the dead works so you can serve a living God. Hebrews chapter 9. So, Lord have mercy. You're with me. Ooh, I'm preaching hard. Say amen, somebody. All right. Now, what am I saying? So, Isaiah 32 again. The work of righteousness shall be peace. All right? So that's going to bring peace to you. Now, you and God are one again. And that's what you want because that's what faith flows out of. You don't have to struggle for faith. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. Whoa, 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 whoa. That works. You need to come on in here and rest in the Lord and understand that if he said something to you, that's it. Say amen to that. And the, the next part, and the effect of righteousness is what? Quietness. Boy, you can rest. You can just sleep at night so good. Say amen. The Bible says the unrighteous are like a troubled sea. That it's always something coming. I know they may be looking like they're making plenty of money, but they're taking sleeping pills to try to go to sleep. And now I'm just here to tell you right now, this righteousness will bring quietness to your spirit. Look at the next part of that. He said this. He said, quietness and assurance forever. Now that didn't say insurance. It says assurance. Say assurance. Now what are you, what's another word for assurance? Confidence. So it brings confidence. Righteousness brings confidence. Why does it bring confidence to you? Because you don't have to feel something to believe it. If God said it, you believe it. I said, if God said it, you believe it. So let's look at confidence back again in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. He said, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears whatever we ask, we know we have the petition that we desire of him. Say amen to that. So I want to make sure that I'm operating in righteousness because when I'm operating in righteousness, everything flows like it's supposed to flow. Now I did a little study here of a man named Moses to try to see how he operated. Let's go to Exodus and chapter four, please. And I'll start reading here at verse 10. And Moses said to the Lord, my Lord, oh my Lord, I am not eloquent. Neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and a slow of tongue. Now this is God telling Moses to go down there and get Israel set free. Come on now. And the Lord said unto him, who made your mouth, man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb or the deaf or the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go and I'll be with your mouth and teach you what you ought to say. Say amen to this. And he said, oh my Lord, send I pray thee by the hand of him whom thou was sent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. I won't go any further. So we got Aaron to do it. So Moses is saying, I can't talk. Now this is where Moses came from. He came from making excuses to move out in righteousness. Oh, Jesus. How do I'm talking about move out in righteousness? Because the righteous are as bold. Come on, the righteous are as bold as a lion. Well, I'm just a little timid. No, you're not. <laughs> That's the enemy trying to make you think you're timid. You are as you are from the tribe of Judah. You, I said you are from the tribe of Judah. See. Here's the deal. You and I in righteousness, now just stay with me. We have God's DNA. We have his nature. His nature is the nature 
of a master. His nature is the nature of a ruler. His nature is not a nature of inferiority. He, Jesus didn't feel inferior to anything. He didn't feel inferior to disease. Come on, he didn't feel inferior to people. Come on, he didn't feel, he wasn't intimidated by some intellectual. Come on now, I'm talking about you. He wasn't intimidated by storms. He told storms what to do. Say amen to that. Now I'm saying you and I have to take on this. And when we, he first started, Moses first started, he didn't start way up there in, in mastering things. He started down here talking about, I can't talk. But look what God did with him. Look at Exodus chapter 32 and verse 9, because he's going to do the same thing with you. It's not that righteousness grows, it's that you grow in revelation to it. Look what he says. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen the people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked bunch of people. Praise God. Amen. And therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Moses, let me take care of this bunch and I'm going to give you another group of people to go with you. Look what Moses said. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said this, Lord, why does thou wax a wrath wax hot against the people which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief he did bring them out and to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath. Now he's talking to the God. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Come on now. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. I can hear him now. He got a little authority in his voice. Uh, thy servants of whom thou sweareth by thy own self and said it to them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have spoken uh, of, of will I give unto your seed and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of this evil which thou, which he thought to do to his people. The Lord repented. The Lord, I, I'm talking about the same man that said, I can't talk. The same man that said that now is standing up in the face of God saying, wait a minute. Oh, hold on here. Let's, let's talk. Now, I'm not telling you to get sassy with God. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying you have now the God class of being. You can stand in the presence of God without a sense of inferiority, without a sense of judgment, without, you follow what I'm saying? Now, you want to be, he, it's not that God, no, God knows you can never be God. If you don't know it, he knows it. So that is not the issue. The issue is to bring you up to the place where you can receive his promise. I'm going to say it again. The issue is that he can bring you up to a place where you can receive what he has for you. I'll say it again. The issue is that he wants to bring you up to a place where you can receive his inheritance because a slave can't receive it. Now look at Galatians chapter four, verse one. You got to have righteousness to receive it. What God has for you is fit for a king and anything less than a king can't receive it. You got to have a righteous mentality. I was praying that night in Minnesota and I'm, I'm now it's 12 midnight and Saturday night and I'm trying to get a message from the Lord and I'll start crying, you know, trying to, trying to fake God out, you know, the Lord, the people need a message. I heard it just very clear. What are you doing? I said, sir, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm trying to get a message. He said, that the way you supposed to come to me? I said, well, no, sir. Well, how are you supposed to come to me? 
I said, well, it's supposed to come boldly to you. He said, well, come that way. I, I said, well, in the name of Jesus. And before I could say it, I had to start writing. Why? Because I'm trying to get it out of order. Order is royalty. Say amen to this. Order is royalty. You are a king in God's eyes. You are royalty in God's eyes. You are not some servant, some slave. You are a son. You are a daughter of Abraham. And I'm telling you right now, God has a, look what it says. Now I say the heir, as long as he's a child, does it not differ nothing from a servant, though he be the Lord of all. Put it up there, please, in the amplified translation. Here's what he says. Now what I mean is that as long as the inheritor, the heir, is a child and under age, he does not differ from a slave, although he's a master of all the estate. All the estate is the earth. You are master over the weather. You are master over plagues. You are master over demons. You are master over everything. And I'm telling you what's missing from the church is revelation of your righteousness. You knowing who you are in God, that you have his DNA, and everything Jesus did, you can do it. Turn to the book of Esther. This inheritance is not made for an unrighteous man. Wealth coming into the body of Christ was not made for a fool. Bible says prosperity will ruin a fool. It's made for people who've grown up. You know who you are. Can't nobody look at you and look down on you. If you let them look down on you, that's your fault. I'm saying God is the one who has, who made you, who created you to be who you are. Esther 411. And the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether a woman, man or woman, shall come into the king, into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of is to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live. Now, what happened? It told Esther, Mordecai said, Esther, we need you to go in there and intercede. Say intercede. intercede. Intercession is a type of prayer. Now, I'm using this as an illustration because it is based on love. It's saying that I'm going to stand in the gap for somebody who has missed it. Glory to God. And God's going to look at my heart and judge them. I'm going to intercede. It's based on love. Esther was gap standing. But she fasted three days, had everybody else to fast. Because sometimes to get that flesh subdued, you got to turn the plate over. 